Hey guys, Thunder E here and welcome to another battle vid. Today we're taking a look at the brand new PlayStation 5 Slim and how it compares to the OG PlayStation 5. So you don't have to. Now if you join us for the very first time on the channel, don't forget to smash that subscribe button notification icon so you can watch more videos like this. So there's a brand new PlayStation 5 Slim. You can either get it with a disk drive or you can get it without as a digital version. I did get this as a bundle package with Spider-Man 2 uh, with the disk drive for 499, so 500 bucks with a game, which is actually not bad in terms of bundle package pricing. What comes in it, you do have, of course, your controller, the game is Spider-Man 2. You do have a USB Type-C cable, power cable, and HDMI. Those are everything that come with this device all together, which is nice in the packaging. So what's the differences in terms of specs and look compared to the OG PlayStation 5? So both of them are disk drive versions and I'll start off with just the external look. You can see the OG PlayStation 5 is a one panel plastic matte finish on both sides. While the PlayStation 5 Slim has this two panel setup on the top, it is glossy. At the bottom, it is matte. And you have that on either side of the PlayStation 5. Now, when I flip it over to the disk drive section, there's a little bit, uh, some, some details you're seeing here. You do have these feet which are removable. These also come in your packaging here. And this allows you to basically plug it in and safely place your PlayStation 5 Slim flat on a table and it's sturdy and it doesn't move. So that's actually a nice addition there with that benefit of that split housing. Uh, you also have, uh, you know, the PlayStation buttons here at the very bottom, but this brings a little dilemma for me. Do I like it as a single unit come out or the split unit? One of the benefits of having it split is the fact for more customization. I could have a different color for each panel if I wanted to. If I wanted to have it the most multicolor looking PlayStation, I like that idea here and it's pretty cool, more customization options. I could have say a Spider-Man panel on the top here. I could have a God of War and I could have these two panels having two different colors of say, you know, white and blue PlayStation colors. So whatever I choose to, I can do that with it. While with the OG PlayStation 5, all I will be able to do is just have two sets of colors on either side and that's it. So. That's the difference there, but in terms of removing it, I think it's just easier with that version there as well. Now, another difference here, of course, is the ports. The original PlayStation 5 has in the front a USB Type-A and USB Type-C, while the PlayStation Slim has two USB Type-Cs in the front. There also is a power button and eject button on the OG PlayStation 5, while the PlayStation 5 Slim just has a power button. The eject button's on the drive because the disk drive on the PlayStation 5 Slim is removable. Now how to get to that is very simple. And I'm gonna just show you by opening the panels here. So I have the PlayStation logo side. I can basically separate the panel here. Boom, and you can see this is the vent side. Your drive and also the disk drive is on the other side. Let's just take this off. And this reveals our MVME storage, uh, additional storage here, as well as also your disk drive here on the bottom half. So it's a very simple process to open that. Now let's start off with the disk here. Replacing the disk is similar to how you do it on your original PlayStation, same thing with PlayStation Slim. You unscrew this, you open it up, you put in your NVMe, whatever storage amounts you want to. Right now I'm swapping it into a one terabyte version and I took that one terabyte out of the OG PlayStation into this device. One thing I'll note is that once you do that, um, it will treat it as an extra drive, but it, I couldn't find a way to play games directly. If you guys know, let me know, but you just read it as, yes, there are games stored in that drive. I can transfer it to the internal storage, which is another difference here. The PlayStation 5 Slim has one terabyte of storage, while the OG PlayStation has 825 gigabytes. So there is at least close to 200 gigabytes of extra storage on the PlayStation 5 Slim. So if you're looking for more storage without buying any more, the PlayStation 5 Slim will have that. The other aspect too is the removable drive section, which you can remove just by taking these three screws out once you remove the panel in, and it's a very simple process. Once you do that, you can cover it up and have it as just a digital version. Or if you buy the digital version of the PlayStation 5 Slim, you can add this additional drive for roughly around $59. 
Uh, the one thing I will mention is the, the replacement cover uh, for this that doesn't have a ball, which uh, showcasing uh, the Blu-ray drive, does not come with this package and has to be bought separately. So that's another additional cost to it. Plus there is no built-in stand, similar to what you have with the OG PlayStation like this. You also have to buy this separately as well. So there are a couple of things you have to buy, but the idea of basically removing this drive, especially when it becomes obsolete, is a nice addition from PlayStation. Okay, that's one of my biggest complaints is trying to fit these panels properly because there are more panels on each side, four in total compared to two. It takes a longer time to actually fit them and sometimes don't necessarily fit properly. I've just found this to be an annoying, frustrating thing uh, that happens with the PlayStation 5 Slim. That being said, when it comes to ports on this device, you do have the same amount of ports at the rear of the device, but the layout is a bit different. The HDMI uh, port is on top of the PlayStation 5 Slim, while it's at the bottom on the OG PlayStation 5. You still have the same Ethernet port, as well as also two USB-A ports, and the power plug at the bottom. So those are similar, just the layout is a bit different here. Now, what about just sizing in general? Now, in terms of weight, the PlayStation 5, OG PlayStation 5, weighed about 8.25 pounds, while the Slim with the Blu-ray drive weighs about 7.25 pounds. Uh, and then without the Blu-ray drive, it drops down to roughly around 5.75 pounds, if I'm not mistaken. So again, there's a reduction in weight and size. But when you look at it side by side to the OG PlayStation 5, it's still a lot, rather large console. It is definitely smaller in dimensions, but it's not as small as you think because when you put it next to something like the Xbox Series X, the PlayStation 5 Slim is still larger than the Xbox Series X in terms of size. So not much in terms of size reduction here for me when using this. But I do like the fact that it does have some more customer build because customizability in terms of the way you can customize it. And when you place it on your, uh, your TV stand, uh, it looks really nice, smaller footprint as well. And gameplay wise, it still plays the same. Now, the big question here is, should you buy it if you already have a PlayStation 5? Well, with all the extra benefits here, including, I, I didn't mention earlier, Wi-Fi 60 on the PlayStation um, uh, 5 Slim, I say no if you already have a PlayStation 5. Uh, there is no improvement to the processing, there's no improvements to uh, the graphics here. It's still the same as the OG PlayStation 5. Yes, it is smaller, and yes, um, it does have a better Wi-Fi connectivity, uh, and you do have some other customizable features, but it doesn't add anything to the gaming experience. Whatever games you're gonna be playing will perform exactly the same way, and this is not a huge reduction in size. This is not half the size, and it's definitely not smaller than, say, the Xbox Series X, as I mentioned. So for that point, I would say definitely no. Now, if you haven't bought a PlayStation 5 and you're looking to pick one up, then I think this is a good entry point, especially with the bundle packages they have, like the one I picked up with Spider-Man 2 or Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, where it's going for 500 bucks, which is the same cost as just buying a PlayStation without, of course, a game. So that is where I will put the line for, and I think it's only beneficial if you've never picked up a PlayStation 5 and you're looking to pick up one now, then it definitely makes sense. But for everyone else who wants to kind of up, you know, upgrade your PlayStation 5, this is not the device for you. It's cool, it looks nice, it has some really cool features, but definitely only for brand new PlayStation 5 owners. So if you have any questions, any comments about the PlayStation 5 Slim, um, and you want to see more about this device and maybe say even the PlayStation Portal, which I'll be covering soon, let me know. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy your entertainment.